If you happen to be using groups in a class, Jamboard can be a great tool. I want to show you a few ways you can make a Jamboard work for groups in your class. So I'm going to start by just making a new one. I'm at the jamboard.google.com if you've never used it before. And I'm just going to click the little plus sign on the bottom right corner of the screen and start my jam. So let's take a look at three separate approaches. Now, the first approach is probably the one that I would probably use least. However, there may be a number of reasons for you to want to use it this way. And this would entail just using the share options right here. So if I were to go here and I had the the Google addresses or the email addresses of specific students, I could make one of these per every group of students. So let's say that I am going to call this jam uh, group one. And of course, you know, the students would be submitting their ideas or whatever on here. Okay, so if I were to only share this with a small group of people, okay, I'm only going to share it with one for now, okay, and I'm, I'm going to just, just share that and, uh, okay, that's fine. So, if I were to make that for multiple groups, I would just go back to my Jamboard and make a second one. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Okay, so I would just, obviously, I would just keep saving them for the various different groups, and I would be sharing them with the specific members of that group. Okay, so what we want to do is look at probably a better way to use this. Now, one of the great benefits of using group work is at the end when the various groups start to share their ideas. So oftentimes it's better if they're all on one page. And I would say that this particular one is, is pretty much ideal. And what we could do here is maybe create a little thing here like um, share your group results. That's nice. Okay, and what we could do is there's a number of things we could do. For one thing, we could, uh, if, if they share their results, chances are they're going to be putting it into these little stickies. So let's say that we only have one, two, three, four, well, you know, this number of groups, we could actually assign a color to each group. So we could let everybody know what their color is by just making a sticky as a as a guide or as a key. So um, actually that's supposed to say group one. Okay. So let's hit, hit save. Okay. So we could actually give them a key so they know. Okay. So let's make another one just so you can see. I'm only going to make two because I think you'll get the idea. So let's say group two will be blue. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we'll save that. And so they'll know what their color is. So then you can assign students to come in and, and, uh, and when they want to represent an idea from their group, they will choose the appropriate color for their sticky. And uh, my thoughts. Okay. And put it in based on the color. So you'll see group one will be all in blue and group, I mean, group one will be all in yellow and group two will be all in blue. Now, that is one way to do it. Now, another way to do this, I'm just deleting these. Okay. Another way to do this is to separate the page for your various groups. Okay. So rather than doing color coding, you can just have them put it in this spot that corresponds with their group. So to do that, it's really best to just make a shape. Okay. So you could make, let's say we have three groups in our class. And so let's make a shape and then let's, let's fill the shape in with a color and I'm going to duplicate it. And then we will fill the shape in with another color. And I'm going to duplicate one more time and fill the shape in with yet one more color. Okay, so group one, we'll put everything here and you can actually label these. Okay, we could put little text boxes across the top.
Okay, so you could have everybody sharing their results here. And I think you get the idea. Now, one of the problems is, is as they are adding their stickies, these things will start getting moved around and it can get really messy. So what I like to do with something like this is actually make it into a, sta uh, a stationary background. And the only way you can really do that in here is to, is to make an image of this and then reload it as a background. So if I save frame as image, it's going to save it to my downloads. Okay, so it's just saved it to my downloads. I'm using a Mac and put it in my downloads folder, but it would be in whatever you use for downloads. And what we actually do now is, is clear the frame. Okay, now remember that image has been saved to my downloads. So if I go to set background and come back in here and browse my computer, and I'm going to browse to my downloads folder. Okay, so where's my downloads folder? The image that was just made, it's named after your jam. I'm just going to click open and it's going to put that in as a background and now nobody can move anything. So students can come in and put their ideas on their stickies, uh, you know, whatever they want and save it and then put it into the their their particular group section. Okay, so that is the and one other way to approach it, it's a great way, okay? It really makes, knowing how to make that stationary background really helps. Now there's one other thing that you can do is that at the very top of a jam, you can have more than one page. So you could assign maybe the first page to group one, the second page to group two, the third page to group three, and so on. And they would only, they would be instructed to only add posts to their, their respective sections. Now, that one's okay, but it doesn't really have all of the ideas together on one page. Of course, if space becomes an issue, you may have to resort to this particular solution. So those are your three or four approaches to using Jamboard uh, when using groups. And uh, hopefully when you do it, you'll spell group correctly, which I failed to do.